Hi, this is the first part of the Blender beginner course, and I'll focus on the basics. I'll start by introducing Blender interface and we'll call rendering modeling more. If you are interested in learning the latest 3D techniques, particularly in Blender, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Before we begin, let me introduce our Asset Distro website, where you can explore a variety of free and premium assets. We offer high-quality game-ready assets and also Blender projects, all of which you are free to use in any of your projects. So be sure to check out our store at store.blackcave.com. I have a 3D viewport here, which shows all the changes in the 3D scene. I'll explain this 3D window in detail later, but first let's briefly go over the other sections. I'll start with the hierarchy, a section on the right side that includes all the objects in the scene. We can view and modify any object from this list, including the cube, camera, and light. All the objects are grouped into collections, which help keep the scene organized. We'll go over this section in detail later. The next section is the scene settings, where we can adjust nearly all the attributes. It includes several sections, each responsible for modifying a specific aspect of the scene. The bottom section is the timeline for animation, where you can play and create animations. You can play the animation using the play button here or by pressing the spacebar. The left side contains essential tools for modifying the 3D view, which I'll explain later. In the top section there are two tabs, I'll use this tab soon, but first let's explain the upper section. The upper section includes essential options for changing the interface and settings in Blender. Let's start with this menu. First is the file menu, where you can save, open and export the scene. You can create a new scene using the new button. There are various scene types, so let's select general which is the simplest scene. I can open a .blend file or access recently opened projects. Save will save the scene as the .blend file. Let's leave the other options for now. In the edit menu I can access undo, redo and other important options. However, preferences is the most important one. In preferences I can change Blender settings such as adding extra features, adjusting key bindings, graphic settings and more. Next is the render menu where I can export an image or video from my project. This will be the final result and I'll explain it in detail later. I can modify the windows using this menu. For example, I can create a new window using the new window button. This is the helper window that you can use, especially if you have multiple monitors. You can access tutorials, documentations and support through the help menu. With this section, I can change the workspace. For example, I can switch the modeling mode by selecting modeling. Next, I can modify the cube. Or I can switch to sculpting mode using this button, although you might not be familiar with these features yet. Or other important sections like shading which is related to the colors of objects, animation and more. To have full control over the scene and modify it, I need to switch between these sections. In the 3D viewport, I can rotate the camera using the middle mouse button. I can pan the camera by holding shift and middle mouse button. I can zoom in and out using control and middle mouse button or I can use the mouse scroll. This is the camera we saw earlier in the hierarchy. And this is the light. These entities, especially the light, affect the render time or scene result, but I can switch the camera view. In the camera view, Blender simulates a real camera. Press 0 on the numpad to go to the camera view. This square is the camera's coverage. I can scroll to zoom in and see the result better and fit the camera view to the viewport. 
But if I rotate the camera, I'll move out to the camera view. I mean, want to rotate and move the camera itself instead. Press the N key to open this menu, which is responsible for scene related tasks. Go to the view section and enable camera to view. Now I can change the camera's coordinates using the control buttons. So, what's the benefit of the camera? When we want to render the scene, Blender will use the camera. Actually, Blender does not render the scene outside of the camera. Ok, press 0 again to go back to the viewport mode. Now let's modify the objects in the scene, for example by moving or rotating them. I need to use the left side menu, where there are tools for changing the coordinates. This tool will move the object. You can see the name of each axis at the top. Red is X, green is Y, and blue is Z. The next tool is the rotation tool. I can rotate the object on all axes using the empty space between the axes. The last tool is the scaling tool, and I can scale the object up or down on any axis I want. Or I can use the center point to scale the object in all axes. The question is, can I access these tools using shortcuts? Yes, by pressing shift space you can access this menu. I can easily select any transformation tool here. I have another shortcut for changing the object's coordinate. Press the G key for the move tool. Now I can move the object freely. But in move mode, if you look at the bottom, you'll see several shortcuts. For example, using the X key will move the object only along the X axis. The Y key for the Y axis and the Z key for the Z axis. If you press the left click, you changes will be applied and pressing the right click will cancel the changes. I can access the rotation tool by pressing the R key. And I can access the scale tool using the S key. And I can still use the access shortcuts. The next feature is that you can change the coordinates in the cube properties. I have position, rotation, and scale properties in this section. Each object in the scene has a section. Let's change the numbers. This lock icon disables the corresponding axis in the 3D view. Ok, now let's add other objects to the scene. The question is what entities can we add? We can add any entity for 3D, rendering, audio and so on that is necessary for a complete animation. From the top menu we need to select the add button. There are many entities here, such as camera, light and more which we already have in the scene. The section 1 is Mesh, which contains the 3D models. There are some primitive shapes available. For example, the cube that we already have. Let's add a plane object. It's too small, so we need to scale it up using the S key. Ok, that's good. The plane is one of the essential objects for creating floors and walls. Let's add more objects. Everything will appear at the center of the scene. There is also a shortcut for the add menu. Press shift and A to open it. These two spheres have different topology, which I'll explain later. Let's add a cylinder for the final step. As you've noticed, the spheres look like origami. We can smooth them using the attribute menu. To access the attribute, select the object and right click on it. 
You can do many actions like deleting the object or you can use the delete key or the X key. Or you can do other tasks like copying or duplicating the object using Shift D. During duplication, if you press left click, it will say where the mouse is. The option we need now is Shade Smooth, which will remove the origami lock. Actually, that's not origami, it's called hard edges. Let's delete the unnecessary objects. We can access other operations from the object menu, where we can find options like duplicate and delete. The next menu is select, which we use to choose objects. For example, pressing all or the A key selects all objects in the scene. In the view menu, we can change the view direction, play the animation, render the current view and more. Let's look at the options in the top right. This option controls the visibility of the objects. For example, if I click the eye icon, Next to the mesh, all the 3D models will disappear. With the cursor off, we can't select any 3D models in the scene. This can be done for all entities, which I haven't introduced yet. As you can see, the camera is not visible now. The next option is related to the gizmos, where some important UIs like the axes will disappear. Now I have them back. We can turn any gizmo on or off from the gizmo list. For example, the navigation UI. The next option is for more specific cases, where the grid selected objects and all elements in the scene disappear. In this menu I can also turn any UI or element on or off as needed. For example, I can disable the floor, or along with the X and Y axis, I can enable the Z axis preview. By changing the scale number, the grid size will adjust. I don't want to introduce all the options for now, we'll use them as needed. I can add transparencies using this button, making all the objects behind the cube visible. I can even see the cube's edges. Let's add a 3D model. We can easily see it. This option is very useful when you want to change the shape of the model based on the reference behind it. Let's look at the important section. We can change the rendering method using these buttons. With the first button, we can activate wireframe mode, allowing us to see the edges of the objects. The default mode is solid, where we can only see the surfaces, with no colors or shadows. With the next option, we can see the colors and some lighting, which is useful for adding colors to the scene. The process of coloring is called creating material or shading which we'll cover later. The next mode is Render Mode, where we can see the final result of the lights in the scene. The position of the lights is important in this mode, and it's also the most resource-intensive mode. As you can see, the shadows and lights are being calculated. If we move the light, the shadow will change in real time. We can add more lights from the add menu and see the results. Actually, the final renderer uses this mode to give a final representation of the scene. We can also change the graphic mode by pressing the Z key. All the modes are listed here, and we are currently in render mode. The next menu is related to rendering. For example, this section specifies a lighting method.
The next section we can specify the wire color, which is useful when we are in the wireframe mode. As you can see, the wire color is changing. The color section changes the color of the objects in solid mode. We can set a static color in the single mode. In the background section, we can change the color of the scene's background. The world option is useful in render mode. With the report mode, we can specify a color. With the X-ray field, we can implement something like the transparent mode I introduced earlier. But here we can adjust the X-ray intensity. With the shadow option, I can add a temporary shadow to the scene. And we can easily adjust its intensity. Let's skip the other options for now. Now let's work with the hierarchy in detail. We can deactivate each collection using the checkbox. Or we can turn off the visibility of the collection using the eye icon. This camera icon will disable this collection in the final render, which we will work on later. We can also perform these operations for each individual entity. As you can see, each element in the scene can be grouped into a specific collection. While an object is selected, press the M key to create a new collection. Name it whatever you want. Now the plane is placed under the new collection. We can also move another object into the plane's collection. It's also possible to move an element into a collection using drag and drop. Alright, I think that's enough for this part. In the next part, I'm going to introduce rendering and lighting. So, if you want these series and courses to continue, don't forget to like. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share your questions and ideas in the comments.